Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tushar Mehta, orthopedic surgeon in your faculty of orthopedics. Well, today's topic of discussion is these two confusing fractures. Let's simplify them. I'm sure by now you must have understood that we are dealing with a bone called trapezium. We are dealing with a bone called as first metacarpal. The fracture is quite evident in front of you and believe me it's not in the trapezium it is in the first metacarpal it's not in the head it's not in the neck it's not in the shaft it is in the base of the first metacarpal this is the trapezio first metacarpal joint line well is the fracture extending into the joint line yes is that called as an intraarticular fracture? Yes. Now, is that fracture line? Is that fracture line transverse? No. Is that fracture line spiral? No. Is this fracture line oblique? Yes. So, to conclude, we deal. We are dealing with an intraarticular fracture of base of first metacarpal, which is for sure oblique and displaced. And this is what is called as Bennett's fracture. Let's switch over to the next one, trapezium, first metacarpal. Fracture is not again in the trapezium, it is in the first metacarpal, it is not in the head, not in the neck, not in the shaft, it is in the base. Now this is the trapezio first metacarpal joint line. So again, my same point of view is the fracture line extending into the trapezio first metacarpal joint, yes. So, am I going to call this as an intraarticular fracture of the base of the first metacarpal just like the previous fracture? Yes. Now, is this fracture oblique? I don't think so. Is this fracture having more than two fragments? I do think so. One, two, three, probably even four. So, with this smaller, smaller size of fragment, I will definitely going to, I'm definitely going to call it a comminuted fracture. Apart from that, I can see uh, I can see a V shape. Sometimes you can see a Y shape. Sometimes you can see a T shape. So this fracture, what you have seen just now, is what is called as Rolando's fracture. So guys, to conclude, two fractures of the base of the first metacarpal both have one thing in common: that both are intraarticular. Then what is the difference? If it is oblique and displaced, Bennett. If it is T V Y shape, it comminuted. Rolando. So this is how you differentiate Bennett and Rolando, a very frequently asked topics right from your UG to PTN. Well, before I go further, I'm sure you can see the position of the hand where one can imagine that this can be the radial artery, this can be the ulnar artery. And believe me, guys, that these two thumbs are of the examiner which are occluding the radial and the ulnar artery. Now, guys, radial and ulnar artery, they combine together in the palm to make something which is called a superficial palmar arch from where you get the individual digital arteries. The test here, as you can read the theory, this is called Allen's test, which is basically done to detect the potency of the superficial palmar arch, which I have made it in front of you. Now, how to check the potency? It's very simple. As of now, the two arteries are blocked by the two thumbs of the examiner, so pressure has been stopped. Now, what we'll do is we'll ask the patient to flex, extend, flex, extend the fingers. I'm sure you all can see the blanching right now here, and ulnar artery pressure is released, and the channel flow has been restored. We'll again ask the patient to flex and extend the fingers, and now the pressure will be removed from the radial artery, and you can see that the blanching has again become red. What does that mean? Radial channel is patent, ulnar channel is patent, both the channels are patent, arch is patent, and Allen's test is positive. Yes, guys, normally if you're not able to do the job, then the test is positive. Here, where it's an exception, where you're doing your job, where the arteries are patent, they're intact, the arch is patent, Allen's test is positive. So, very important clinical test. I'm sure it was useful for all of you. Three beautiful images that are one of the most frequently asked MCQs in your interest exam. I'm sure if you see this image number one, you can conclude that you are dealing with what? Genoverum. Okay, so this is basically genoverum for you because we know that whenever we use the word genoverum, it's not that the geno or the knee will go into virus, it is always the part distal to geno, that is the tibia, the leg, the fibula, they go towards midline, so we call it genoverum. By the way, this is also called as bow legs. 
The second image that I want you to see here is this, okay. This is what is called as Genu valgus. Now when I say Genu valgus, what does that mean? That Genu, mm -hmm, the part distal to Genu will go away from midline, it will go away from the midline. That is what is called as Genu valgus, which is by the way also what is called as knock knees. Now if you see, then this is Genu varus here and if you see, then it is Genu valgus on this side. It feels as if, you know, a wind came and the knee got, both the knees got swept with it. So this third image, what you are looking at right now is what is called as wind swept deformity. So now if you see the fourth image, this fourth image is basically showing you the changes in the distal end of the wrist. So these are basically the changes due to rickets. So these are the changes in the distal end of the radius due to rickets, metaphysial cupping, splaying, fraying, broadening, widening. And this fifth image that you see here is what is called as racketic rosary. So I just wanted to cover a few very important radiological and clinical spotters and out of which we have covered five clinical spotters here. What can be the further leading question? Let's talk about them. The further leading question is pretty simple that they can ask you about the most common cause of of what? They can talk to you about the most common cause in children of Genu virus. Well, answer is records followed by idiopathic. Similarly, they can ask you the most common cause of genu valgus in children. It is just the opposite, which is idiopathic followed by rickets. They can ask you the most common cause of wind swept deformity in children. Answer is, but of course, rickets. This is one of the most frequently asked set of three one-liner MCQs. Now, one day, they will definitely alter it. I'll tell you how they will alter it. Rather than children, they will mention the word adults or they will mention the word rather elderly. For Geno virus, if they ask you in adult or elderly, the most common cause, believe me, is osteoarthritis. For Geno valgus in adult or elderly, the most common cause is rheumatoid arthritis. For windswept deformity in adult, again, it is rheumatoid arthritis. So, a very useful topic that we've discussed just now with five clinical spotters along with certain one line and MCQ. Just by looking at this x-ray, what is the one diagnosis, radiological diagnosis that comes to your mind? I'm sure you all can see femur, I'm sure you all can see tibia, you all can see fibula, this is lateral, this is medial. We can see the lateral joint space. We cannot see the medial joint space. There's a reduction of the medial joint space. Well, I'm sure it's a radiological spotter and by now you all must have understood that we are dealing with a topic here called as osteoarthritis, which is, which is better called as now degenerative joint disease. Well, primarily an old age problem, a senility, a senescence, a aging, a wear and tear related issue. Where the primary layer which is involved in the pathogenesis is what is called as articular cartilage. Not only we involve articular cartilage here, but we have to look at certain obvious radiological signs. The first x-ray sign as you all can see which is clearly seen in front of you is reduction in the joint space. Now this reduction in the joint space is an asymmetric reduction where you can see that medial narrowing occurs earlier and more as compared, compared to lateral which you all can see. A few more X-ray signs which are associated with this, apart from asymmetric reduction of the joint space, the next thing that you see in chronology is what is called as an osteophyte. I'm sure you all can see this bony spurs, bony spicules, they're called as osteophyte. The problem with an osteophyte is that one day they might get broken and they might to come to lie inside the knee joint and become a 
lose body. I'm sure by now you all must be aware of the fact that any bone that looks a little more white on an x-ray is called sclerosis. So if you see then this bone is a little extra white here and since it is just beneath the cartilage, we call it subchondral sclerosis. I'm sure you all can see a fluid filled cavity in this area and a fluid filled cavity is what is called as cyst formation which is just below the cartilage that is subchondral cyst formation. So this is how the chronology of x-ray signs happen. Few one-liners associated with this topic. Well most common joint knee but if not knee then what then hip if not hip then what spine. Are any small joints involved? Yes, even small joints are also involved. First, carpometacarpal joint involved. First, metatarsophalangeal joint involved. PIP joint and DIP joint are also involved. The proximal and the cylindrophalangeal joint. In knee, most common bone is patella. No, it's not femur, it's not tibia, it is patella. The most common muscle, quadriceps femoris, which part? Vostus medialis, which part? Vostus medialis obliquus. The first muscle to undergo degeneration and atrophy is VMO. The most common symptom is pain and believe me, it's not only the most common symptom. This is the only, this is the only absolute indication for doing TKR in a patient total knee replacement. The most common deformity that you see is genuverum. Let me show you the genuverum. So this is the genuverum. There are other deformities as well that we see in the PIP and the DIP. In the PIP we see Baucard node, the DIP we see her burden node. When I was preparing like you, it actually was a difficult task for me to remember which one is PIP, which one is DIP, which deformity is what. So I kind of made a mnemonic for myself in those days like blood pressure leads to heart disease. You know, for old age, it looks like to be an apt as well. Blood pressure leads to heart disease. B. Baucard, B. PIP, H. Her burden, D. DIP. So this was a quick recap on this topic of osteoarthritis where we discussed some of the highest yielding MCQs from this topic. Well, stay tuned to more videos on this YouTube channel. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. God bless.